she needs to do that more often. You know, um, many years ago when I was pastoring in uh, Washington State, uh, there was a lady in my church, and of course, this is probably 40, 45 years ago, something like that, and um, we called them specials. If you're over 60, you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, we had testimony service, prayer request service, and specials. And so she got up and she sang a special, and I thought, that's the coolest song. And um, so every so often, I would ask her if she would get up and sing that song. And um, then, I don't know, several, several years later, I found myself in Nashville. And, uh, of course, I met my wife. And uh, turned out, I didn't know, I'd never heard of her family, never heard of her, didn't know they sang. And when I met her, I found out, you know, they were singers. And the song that the lady would sing in my church was called Consider the Lilies. And it turned out that was the song that my wife uh, started singing when she was 16 years old. And I thought, God is just, it's such a small world. <laughs> that I would wind up marrying the person who had made that song famous. And so God is an amazing God. Um, I want to share something with you that over the last 24 hours, God has begun to drop in my spirit. And um, our text, uh, we're going to start in Hebrews chapter 12. Um, if you have your Bibles, you can turn there. I, I wish I had had a video, and I forgot I was going to show it to you today. And it was so profound uh, when I watched it. Cody uh, sent it to me, and uh, I texted him. I said, thank you for making me cry. Um, and then I let Linda watch it, and she sat there and cried. And um, it would have been a really cool video to watch. Maybe we can watch that next week. In Hebrews uh, chapter 12, verses uh, 26 and 27, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word yet once more signifieth the removing of, of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. And I don't know if you know it, but uh, of course the, the author of Hebrews is debatable. I personally think he was Paul. But you're going to, if you don't know this, much of the epistles, much of what Paul wrote and I stand in conjunction with Pastor Harry today, they were quoting the Old Testament. It wasn't original stuff. They were quoting the Old Testament. And so in Haggai chapter 2 and verse 6, it says, Thus, thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once, and it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the dry land. And so he begins to write here and, and he says, in, in Haggai he said, yet once more and yet a little while. So he was prefacing this prophetic word by saying, I'm going to do this, but it's going to be a little while that there is a time frame attached to what he is saying. And then Jesus begins to speak here in Hebrews, and he says, yet once more, not only am I going to shake the earth, but this time I'm going to shake the heavens. And so I, I, as I reflected on that, that he said, um, this time not only am I going to shake the earth, but I'm going to shake the heavens. We're going to have to go back to the book of Exodus and pick up to where this originally started. In Exodus, the 19th chapter, 
Uh, and to preface this passage of Scripture, Israel has just come out of Egypt. And they are on a mission to go into liberty, to possess their inheritance. Everything that Pastor Harry talked about in communion ties in with this. I can tell you this, it is the will of God for every believer to prosper. It is the will of God for not one Christian to be sick. Still struggling some with my blood pressure. It goes back and forth. It's, I mean, it's better than it was. But as I sat there in the front row and I ate that, that cracker, I told the Lord, I said, I'm eating my healing today. How many ate your healing today? Hallelujah, because there is power in reactivating the process of what God sets in order. And communion is a wonderful thing. Jesus, when you do communion, Jesus is the bread of life, but the Holy Ghost is the new wine. And when you take communion, not only are you digesting Jesus inside of you, you are digesting the baptism and the power of the Holy Ghost. How many saw our podcast Wednesday night on you can have the nature of Christ and not have the power of Christ? If you haven't watched it, you need to go back and watch it because it really is. There's a revelation to that on why so many good, godly people who are going to heaven have no authority in their life and no victory, even though they're Christians. It's because they do not operate in the power of the Holy Ghost. And when God started Pentecost, it didn't start off, hallelujah, absence with speaking in tongues, but it started off with the sign of the baptism of the Holy Ghost with a heavenly language. He was restoring back to the church what was originally lost at the Tower of Babel when they talked a pure language. And when they talked a pure language, God said there is nothing that they will not be able to do because they spoke the language that God gave them. And so here in Exodus, he's setting the stage and he's telling them, he said, you are getting ready to enter in into the land that I have already reserved for you. God had already walked through the land of Canaan. He had already seen the giants. He had already seen the cities. He had already seen the walls of Jericho. But he never mentioned any of that to them. He said, go take it because my angel will go before you and you will possess the land. And so the Lord begins to speak to Moses in the 19th chapter. In verse 10, he says, The Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day. For the third day... The Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And then we're going to go to verse 16. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning. This is the beginning of the third day, not the end. There were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceedingly loud so that all the people that were in the camp trembled. Verse 18, and Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire and the smoke thereof ascended of, as a smoke of a furnace and the whole mount quaked greatly. I think I have... A, there's another verse here. Um, maybe it's in Joel. Verse 16, Joel chapter 3. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake. 
but the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So what God did was, he's, what they're referencing in Hebrews is that when the Lord got ready to send Israel into the promised land, the Bible said God shook the earth. I have to believe that it was not just the Israelites that felt this shaking. You can't shake an entire mountain and hardly nobody feel it. There are earthquakes today that are felt 50 and 60 miles oh, somewhere under the distance or even farther than that. They will say that the seismic activity is registered when a mountain quakes and God begins to shake the mountain and he set it on fire and he told the people of the Lord, he said, prepare yourself, sanctify yourself. No wonder God is speaking a word of holiness in this hour is because he's telling us, prepare yourself, get rid of the spots, the wrinkles, and the blemishes because you're getting ready to meet God face to face, and God is going to shake the earth, and when he shook the earth, he set the mountain on fire, and when God shook the earth, he began to utter his voice from the top of the mountain to Moses. And that's where the Ten Commandments were released. And God began to give them direction on how to take care of themselves and how to walk circumspectly before their creator. And he said, if you will do these things, you will be blessed beyond measure. And the Lord promised to them that they were going to enter on the third day into their inheritance. It doesn't matter that they didn't go. It was the will of God that they were to go, but unbelief got a hold of them. So now we come to this hour, and we're getting ready to enter in to 2023, the third day. In fact, if you go back from the time of Christ to now, we're entering into the third day. So prophetically, when you go back through the scriptures, there are so many profound events that are surrounded around the third day, from Jesus being resurrected on the third day to the Israelites going to the land of Canaan on the third day. There's just instance after instance that God does phenomenal things at the beginning of the third day. No wonder, hallelujah, we are in a different, uh, in a place prophetically uh, that we can feel it and God is saying things and we understand there's a shaking. If you weren't at prayer meeting yesterday, and I know that many of you cannot come, so this is not an indictment. I'm just telling you, there was a divine holy presence of God in this place. And as we, that from the very beginning, you didn't have to work it up. It was just there. You could feel the utterance of the spirit of the Lord. What is this? We are marching. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to walk into the third day in this nation. Now, we're getting ready as a church to march into the fullness of the power of God. Whenever it was at the third day that Israel is changing locations spiritually and physically. They're leaving one place and they are entering into their permanent abode that God has picked for them. Regeneration Nashville is in a very peculiar place right now. But this church, December 22nd or 7th, December 27th, next month, we will, this church will be two years old. <laughs> Resting place died. And on December 27th, God birthed this church. It was done without the help of man. It was done without the help of television. It was done without the help of promotion. It was done when we were lowly and discouraged and we didn't think that God knew where we were. And then God just said, watch this. And he just did something. And so 
when the new year changes, this church will be entering into its third day, its third year, prophetically. Cornerstone's been so gracious to us for the last two years to allow us to grow in their sanctuary. But God wants us to have our own place. If you ask me, Pastor, where are we going? I got to be honest with you, I have no clue. We've tried, we've knocked on doors, we've called people, and everybody says, no, no, no. And yet I know in the depths of my soul that God will not let us perish. He will not let us die. Hallelujah. Why? Because we're leaving Egypt, and we're getting ready to cross over into a new place, into a new dimension. And so you just have to listen to the voice of God and declare, if God be for us, nobody can can be against us. Hallelujah. I'm telling you uh, that God is declaring uh, that I have already prepared a place for you uh, that is permanent uh, and it belongs to you. Uh, sanctify yourself. We're on the third day. Uh, you're getting ready to enter into it. Sometimes God closes doors. So you move. I'll be honest with you, my personal choice is I'd stay here. I like it here. And yet we have to be obedient to the word of the Lord. And so when we go back to the book of Hebrews, the Lord says this, he says, once more, I'm going to shake the earth, but this time I'm also going to shake the heavens. So he's referring, he says, originally, he said, all I did was shake the earth because it had to do with a physical fulfillment of a natural people. It wasn't some spiritual thing like we're walking into as a church in the dispensation of grace. They were physically going to take a land. They were physically going to encounter an enemy. Their weapons were not prayer and fasting. They were real swords, real spears, all of those things. Their enemies were flesh and blood. And that's what God said. He said, I want you to be in this land. So it was a physical battle. But God said, now... Remember, Haggai said, yet yeah, it shall be for a little while. And now he says in Hebrews, he says, this time, not only am I going to shake the earth once more, and I begin to, and then God's been speaking in this. I'm telling you, there's getting ready to be earthquakes, says the Lord, in this nation. And God is going to target places, and there's going to be earthquakes around the earth. You say, how can that be? Matthew says it, before the coming of the Lord, there shall be earthquakes in many places. What is that? God is fulfilling his word in Hebrews. I'm going to shake the earth. And when it begins to shake the earth, he begins to shake the confidence of men in the arm of flesh. And he begins to challenge them to accept the glory of God. You will see it on the news, says the Lord. The commentators and news anchors will say, we can't explain this. We don't know why this is happening. It's beyond our control. There is no help. We cannot rebuild. We never saw this coming. There was no warning. What is that? That's just God doing what he does best. So now the Lord says, before the coming of the Lord, he said, this time, I'm going to shake the heavens. Now, King James says heaven. And if you're not careful, that will really throw you off. Because the original is not heaven, it's heavenlies. There are three heavens. There's the heaven right above the earth. And then there is the heavens. 
and that's between the heaven that is right above us, the, the atmosphere, and then there is the heaven of heavens where God lives. So God is not speaking about shaking where he lives because there's no need to. You mess with God in heaven, and it'll be over so fast. That's what Jesus said. He said, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Lucifer walked in, looked at the Lord and said, I've got all these guys behind me. I'm taking over. Get off the throne. God just looked at him and said, not today. You're gone. Yeah. Boom. The next thing Lucifer knows that he is in the heavenlies. And he has been kicked out of heaven. Because you can, he cannot stand in the presence of the Lord with rebellion. And so God kicked him out. The devil is not in hell. Hell is pretty much empty. There is a Sheol and there's a Hades. Sheol was where Old Testament saints were. Today, Sheol is empty. But Hades is where people go before the great white throne judgment. But the devil is not there because he has not yet been judged. He has only been stripped of his authority that he had until Jesus Christ died on the cross. No wonder heaven opened and the angels sang glory to God in the highest and peace on earth and goodwill towards men. When Jesus was born, it's because the angels, the Lord, hallelujah of hosts, they recognize that there's a reversal taking place by the spirit and the power of God. So the Lord begins to declare here, he says, I'm going to shake the heavenlies. Why? Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2 says this, that the devil is the prince of the power of the air. The word air there in the original means heavenlies. Prince means the ruler and the commander. Right now, between the earth and where God lives is the heavenlies. And that's where demonic forces are. And the Bible says that Satan is the prince and the power of the heavenlies. James says this, every good and perfect gift that cometh down from above comes from the fathers of lights. But it has to come through the heavenlies. A lot of you have gifts that have already been released from heaven, but they're being held up in the heavenlies by the devil, and you need to take your authority and begin to declare the enemy, let go of what belongs to me by the power of God. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, I think verse 6 says this, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers, principalities, rulers of darkness, and what? Spiritual wickedness in high places. Again, the same translation, heavenlies. So no wonder God is saying, <clears throat> before I come back and before the church can ever step into her final inheritance, God has to shake the heavenlies. And when he begins to shake the heavenlies, this is what the word shake means. It means to overthrow, to cast down. The root of it means to cause to tremble, to throw men into a tremor, to quake for fear. It is a motion produced by winds and storms. Psalms 2 and 4 says, He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Can I tell you, 
Isaiah 65, 17 says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor shall come into mind. What God is beginning to do, and you're going to see in the next few months, is the Lord is beginning to shake the heavens because that's where the enemy has been ruling and reigning. Now, you can go back to Jacob and his dream where he said, I saw angels ascending and descending. So they say, well, pastor, how is it that if the devil rules over the heavenlies, angels had access to come and go because anything that does not have sin in it, the enemy has no authority over. And the angels were made, hallelujah, without sin. And so they have complete access to go back and forth. But if you have sin in your life, the first thing that happens is you no longer have access to go through the heavenlies. And when you begin to pray and you say, I bind this thing in Jesus' name. You remember the Lord says, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. There still has to be a movement through the heavenlies. And the reason the earth is in the mess that it's in and our nations in the mess that it's in is because the heavenlies have been ruling over the United States of America and demon spirits. That's why there's such confusion and such deception. That's why nobody understands what's going on anymore. Evil's good and good is evil because hell is ruling and reigning. But God is saying before I come back, I'm going to take the church and I'm going to call her to enter in on the third day at the beginning of the third day into her inheritance. So it doesn't matter what happens next Tuesday in the election. It doesn't matter who's president of the United States. It doesn't matter what Pelosi says or Biden says or the Supreme Court says. God said, I will laugh at them in derision because I am going to shake the heavens. I'm going to cause men to tremble. I'm going to lose a wind and a storm that will change things. Prophetically, we're at the most critical time frame that God, hallelujah, is in the middle of doing Deuteronomy 10, 14 says, Behold, the heavenlies and the heaven of heavens are the Lord thy God, the earth also, and with all that is therein. Psalm 68 and 8 says this, The earth shook. And this is referring back to what we started off in Exodus. The earth shook. This is what David's referring to. He said the heavens also dropped. Remember, this is where the devil is. The word dropped in the Hebrew means to prophesy. That when God began to shake Mount Sinai, that the heavenlies began to prophesy. God can make evil people prophesy. If you don't believe it, go back and read about Saul. The Spirit of the Lord can come on somebody. Listen, there are a whole lot of people today that are reprobates that at one time were filled with the Holy Ghost. And if God wants to use them, he can use them. Years ago, I don't know if you remember, there was a, a comic name or a, a, a comedian named Sam Kinison. Sam Kinison went to Bible school, Pentecostal Bible school, if my facts are right, in New York, was baptized with the Holy Ghost and was an evangelist in hell revivals, but got so discouraged because of the lack of success and so much of what he saw that was hypocritical, he eventually backslid. Rodney Dangerfield took Sam under his wing 
And Sam became a very successful comedian. But his rhetoric and what he did was horrible. He would make fun of Jesus being crucified on the cross. He died on a road, if I'm not mistaken, in Las Vegas in the middle of the night in a car wreck. Going, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. But they said he could go into bars and read people's mail and operate in the gift of the word of knowledge and scare people to death. The gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. And can I tell you, this idea that we got too many people in the government that are out of control and we can't do anything about it, you seem to forget maybe that God is still in control. It doesn't matter. There is not one person that is out of the control of God, you and I are standing under the mandate of the power of the anointing of the Lord. You need to hold your ground. You need to look the devil in the eye and say, I will not back up. You are not coming after me. God has to shake the heavenlies for there to be an end time harvest. The goal, because the devil had Adam's authority, this is something that's very strong in the scriptures, God above all else honors Legal, legal precedents. He, he will not break the laws of heaven and the court of heaven honors legal precedents and authority. Adam gave his authority that God had given him. He gave it to Lucifer. Lucifer did not steal it. He did not usurp it. Listen, authority without power is worthless. Because you can't enforce it. But with the authority that the devil got that day from Adam for 4,000 years, he had a legal right to rule in the heavenlies, and the court of heaven backed him up. You say, that doesn't make sense. God honors his own laws. You reap what you sow, and so the heavenlies is just wild with the power of the enemy until one day, hallelujah, God started over, and he made a last Adam. The reason he's called the last Adam is God knew this one's not going to fail. He's not the second Adam. There won't be a third Adam. He said this is the first and the last. This is the beginning and the end. And all of a sudden, here comes another Adam, and he begins to come down through the heavenlies. The Bible said he ascended on high. Hallelujah. Just as the angels, Jesus could go back and forth through the heavenlies because he had no sin in his life. And he takes back the authority. Now, I think prophetically what's been wrong with the church is that the heavens have been closed over us. When you read the Old Testament, God will talk about the heavens are closed. There's no rain. There's no blessing. How many times you felt like that your prayers just never got past the ceiling, that there was just a closed heaven? And then other times you could get into a place in the spirit and all of a sudden you could just feel that freedom, hallelujah, and you knew that God had opened the heavens. 
when Jesus was baptized, he opened back the heavens. Because when you read the scriptures, it says that when he came out of the waters, the heavens opened. And the Holy Ghost came down on Jesus. Hallelujah. And the Father said, this is my beloved Son. In that moment, hallelujah, Jesus opened the heavens. No wonder he could do what he did. No wonder he could look at leprosy and say, you're gone. Or a blind person, uh, that he would create new eyeballs in the eye sockets. Or limbs would grow out. Or he could look at storms and say, be still. What was that? Jesus was living under an open heaven. Uh, and prophetically, I'm telling you, that as we hit 2023, uh, we are stepping over into a dimension uh, where God is is opening the heavens over you and me and the church and the heavenlies are going to shake by the power of God. <clears throat> now think about this. The heavens have never been shaken before. The earth has. But he says, yet once more, not only is this time I'm going to shake the earth, he said, but this time also I am going to shake the heavenlies. What you and I are getting ready to see, the reason that we have seen so much illegal activity and so much injustice in the earth the emails I get would break your heart. I, I have a lady that, that emails me every once in a while, every six months from Switzerland, and she's an online member, and she says, thank you for the word. You sustain us here in Switzerland. She said, pray that God will just cause them to begin to lift the restrictions. And Regeneration Nashville is a lifeline. This is why you can't worry about where we're going. God isn't going to let us die. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are a lifeline, not only to the nations, but to the states in this United States of America. Listen, we're, we're, we're ending two years old. We're getting ready to step into our third year. And when you step into the third year, you step into a divine providence of God where God says you're coming out of Egypt where you were slaves and you had to beg and you had to subservient to somebody else. But he said, I'm bringing to a land that flows with milk and honey. You're not going to be a slave. Nobody's going to tell you when you can have church at heaven church. Nobody's going to shut you down. The government's not going to stop you because I'm going to give you a land, hallelujah, that belongs to you. It's got your name on it. It's full of my glory and my favor. <laughs> Isaiah 13, 13 says this, therefore, Boy, this was all in the Old Testament. I will shake. Remember, it means overthrow, cast down. I'm going to shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place. In the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger. I'm telling you, God's ticked off. <clears throat> I know I'm ticked off. <laughs> How dare these sorry officials that we voted in to protect us are destroying us. We got people that can't eat, poverty abject, and we give Iran God knows how many billions of dollars in cash. Explain that one. Piety should begin at home. We 
give money to nations that hate us. Boy, I'm going to light it up this week. <clears throat> So the Lord, here's the thing. I'm right. I ain't wrong. I'm not thinking, well, it might not. No, I'm right. Because this word says it. I am just repeating it. And they don't like it, but they can't stop it. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God liveth and abideth forever. You can't find the tomb of Jesus with him in it. You can go visit Mussolini's tomb, Stalin's tomb, Hitler's tomb, and all of these men that go back through time that have ruled humanity and tyranny. But Jesus, hallelujah, comes as a lamb, and he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And his word will not return unto him void and God birthed you and me for this hour we get to see it fulfilled we get to see the Old Testament and the New Testament come together by the power of God we're going to shout we're going to look back in 2023 and say oh look what the Lord has done my God shook the heavens and he's going to do it by the power of the Lord The Lord was speaking. He said, not only am I going to shake the earth only, but also the heavens. He said, because I'm going to remove some things that are shaken of things that man's made. So that things which I made, and I'm paraphrasing here, cannot be shaken, may remain. <clears throat> so the Lord says, <clears throat> I'm fixing to send a wind out of heaven. And he says, the last time I did it, I shook a whole mountain and set it on fire. In fact, he said, it's so terrified Israel, they told Moses, just tell God not to talk to us. <clears throat> you just go talk to him and you just come back and relate to us what he said. But <clears throat> it was, you're, he's terrifying. That's how God is. God is fixing to terrify some people. <clears throat> Hallelujah. If I'm wrong. The worst thing that can happen is people can say he's a nut. <laughs> if I'm right, there's a whole bunch of people in trouble. <laughs> Prophets are never believed by and large. They always prophesy exactly opposite of what looks like is going on. <clears throat> and yet God in his infinite ways, boom rearranges everything to make the word of the Lord come to pass. So God says what we're getting ready to see prophetically <clears throat> is I'm sending a shaking. I'm going to overthrow some stuff. I'm going to cause men to begin to tremble. I'm going to put them in tremors. Hallelujah. I'm going to put them in a cold sweat. Because there's a whole bunch of people, listen, when God really starts moving, you don't have atheists anymore. There are no atheists in hell. And most people don't believe in God until they need him. And then everybody starts praying for him. It's amazing how many unbelievers that don't pray. As soon as it starts rocking and rolling on an airplane and the air mass come down, everybody's a Christian and they're praying and crying and everything else. And yet you look around, you see some people, and they're just sitting there peaceful. Why? Because we know that the devil cannot take us out. Hallelujah. And so the Lord says that there is this time I'm shaking the heavens. 
Why? Because he says, I have to remove some things that have been stopping what I want to do in the earth. He says, so when I begin to shake everything and everyone and every church that is built on the rock Christ Jesus will not be moved. They won't be shaken. <clears throat> it's like the house on the rock and the house on the sand. They both looked identical probably. It was the difference. You couldn't see it. It was underneath. But the Bible says that immediately, hallelujah, when the winds came, the house on the sand fell, and great was the collapse thereof, but the house on the rock stood the time. There is a shaking coming to the earth, and God says, this time I'm going to shake the heavenlies. I'm coming after principalities and powers. Doesn't the Bible say to the pulling down? Not reaching down here, pulling down. Why would you pull down? Because they're up there. There are some strongholds in the heavenlies. Abortion, homosexuality, dishonesty, ungodliness, false religions that have ruled over the earth for too long. And God said, it's time I'm bringing you down. But this time, he said, I got a whole bunch of believers that got the same authority in them that I had in me, behold, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. Bind them and they'll be bound. Loose them and they'll be loosed. Stand on the word of God and declare, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. This is what I feel to the Lord is sharing me is he doesn't need our help to shake the heavens. This is a God thing. He's saying you just need to stand still and behold the salvation of the Lord. Right now what the enemy has been trying to do because he's between us and heaven He's trying to separate us from God. He's trying to separate us from our faith. He's trying to separate us from the gifts that heaven has already released that James talks about. But Paul said this, nothing shall be able to separate me from the love of God. Tribulation. Distress. Persecution, nakedness, famine, sword, height, death, angels, principalities. It doesn't matter. Nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. It doesn't, listen, you, no wonder the Bible tells us the believers, you've got to walk by faith and not by sight. Because the devil can only operate in the physical realm because the only area that he can touch you unless you become demon-possessed is your soul realm. And your soul realm is your emotions, your sight, your taste, your hearing, your feeling, your touch, all of those things. So he uses physical things, the media, people, newspapers. It doesn't matter. He uses physical things to come after you because he's coming after your emotions, your sight and too many believers because they're not strong in the spirit they walk by sight and not by faith and what God is saying you got to step out of the realm of your soul realm and as many as are led by the spirit they are the sons of God he whose mind is stayed upon thee shall have perfect peace we have to believe though we can't see it hallelujah it is more real than what we can see for God is an invisible visible God, but oh, he's trying to tell us, you're just going to have to believe. I already
already did it. I already said it. And when the enemy says, watch me, and just all of these directions, you got to say, but the word says you're a liar. The word says it's not true. The word says you're defeated. The word says I'm healed. The word says I'm not homeless. The word says I'm blessed. The word says I'm all those things that God has called for me. You got to be consumed by it. Even though Adam and Eve were spiritual beings, how did the enemy get them? Sight. Pleasant to the eyes. To make one wise. All of those things. Should have. I, I tell the devil all the time. I mean, I'm like you. There are mornings I get up and I can feel a melancholy spirit just trying to come on me. Or a spirit of discouragement. So you get discouraged? Not long. Because I recognize what it is. Or I'll get up and, and there's no reason. It's just a spirit of heaviness. You all have those things? You like me sometimes? And you know what I do? As soon as I enter into prayer, I say, in the name of Jesus, I'm submitted to the Lord Jesus Christ. And you spirit of melancholy and you spirit of heaviness and you spirit of despair and you spirit of discouragement, I resist you in the name of the Lord and I send you to hell. You go back from wherever you came from. And then all of a sudden you can feel a lifting of the spirit of the Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. God is... Part of why the Lord has delayed, he's trying to find out who's got faith. He's raising up the Gideon army. Hallelujah. He's swilling it down. He doesn't need numbers. He needs soldiers. He doesn't need a, a whole bunch of people. He needs a few people that are full of the power of the Holy Ghost uh, that can look at hell in the eye uh, and say, you came to the wrong place. Uh, I've got the God of glory inside of me. Uh, I cannot be moved. Uh, I shall not be. I shall not be moved. Uh, just like a tree uh, planted by rivers of living water. Uh, I'll lose faith in this house today. I lose the Holy Ghost on you. May God anoint your spirit being to begin to see in the spirit and what God has declared, he will also perform. I believe that this shaking has already begun to take place. That's why the enemy is so upset. It's because they can sense that there's something beginning to happen. Things aren't working out like they should. And th you have one of the things you're going to begin to see is the enemy's going to turn on each other. We don't have to uncover them. They're going to uncover themselves just to save their tails. God is so smart. We don't deserve Canaan land if we don't have faith. Because even the Lord told them, he said, I'm giving you the land on the third day. He said, but you're going to have to go in and fight the battle. But he said, I'm telling you, before you ever engage the enemy, I've already determined the outcome. <laughs> we got too many pathesis and too many conscientious objectors in the church. Well, you know, we need to love everybody. No, we don't. <laughs> if they want Christ, a good example of this is Jesus was such a soul winner but there are some people that become reprobates and they cross the line. And the Bible says that <clears throat> he turns them over to a, decept a deceptive spirit. When Judas, <clears throat> Jesus, I think many times he probably looked at him and said, Judas, you got a weakness. Son, if you don't conquer this thing, 
He's going to conquer you. And Judas would not yield to the counsel of Jesus. <clears throat> Eventually, that thing overruled, overruled him. He finds himself selling Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. <clears throat> but in that room that night where they're celebrating Passover, Jesus, he said, he who dips his hand in the sock is the same who shall betray me. And Judas said, is it me? And the Lord looked at him and said, he didn't say, guys, I'm so burdened for Judas. Let's just gather around him and pray for him. You know what he said? Go do what you got to do. He didn't try to redeem him. He didn't reach out for him. He said, go do what you got to do. And when Judas <clears throat> threw that money down and realized what he had done, he was like, I think it was <clears throat> Esau, Scripture says, though he wept bitterly. And if you really study that, <clears throat> he wasn't crying because he was sorry. He was crying because of what he lost. <clears throat> God is raising up an army. And if you come against us in the Lord Jesus Christ and you attack Jesus Christ, I'm going to defend him. Hallelujah. We make no apologies for that. We, we, are, we are Christians who believe in the Bible. And you already know that, so, so don't come if you don't want to be part of that. But if you're hungry for deliverance and gone, we'll stay with you as long as it takes to bring you, hallelujah, into the kingdom of the Lord. And so in the hour that we're in right now, you need to be encouraged because for the first time since he was cast out, God said, now I'm going to shake the heavenlies. We've never seen that for the church before. We have never seen the heavenlies shaken until God says, I'm going to remove that which can be shaken. And he says, and when I'm done, it ain't over. He said, then I'm going to strengthen those things which remain. And we're going to step into the prophetic purpose of God. And at least for all of 23 and 24, we're going to see the greatest outpouring of the glory of God in the history of the world. So we're going to stand on the word of the Lord, aren't we? Hallelujah. 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 I know we can't do it in the, in the natural, but what we need to do as a church is we need to, in the spirit realm, we need to join hands. Bible said of those men, they did not break rank. Sunday. Hallelujah. We need to join on our spirits in the Holy Ghost. Remember that? kids game we used to play where we'd join hands and somebody to take off at a dead run and try to break through. <clears throat> it's an ollie, 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 whatever it was. Huh? Yeah, Red Rover, Red Rover, and whatever it was. Well, I'm telling you that there are demons that are trying to break through. <clears throat> and the church, hallelujah, needs to join hands in the Holy Ghost. That when these enemies hit us, they bounce off in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. My God, I feel something in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I need you to stand up right now. I need you to begin to loose your prayer language in the spirit of God. I need you to come into agreement with the Lord. If you want to come stand up here, you can. But I'm telling you by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Come on, let's fill it up right now.